Welcome back. Well, we don't quite have another leopard on foot, but we do have one of my favorite flowers, the weeping boar bean flower on this weeping boar bean tree. Called the weeping boar bean because of the fact that the tree exudes so much sap from times that it has sap runs down its bark and looks like it's crying and weeping. And boar bean, boar is a farmer or a settler, and bean is because this, the tree gets some seeds. You can see the seed pods, the empty seed pods at the top of the tree there. Inside it is a bean that gets roasted and ground up as a coffee substitute. And so this is the, I suppose, literally spoken, the crying coffee tree, the crying settler's coffee tree. <laughs> as it, the, the genus is Scotia, a brachypetala, and the reason why it's called brachypetala is that its leaves are shaped like the, the, bron the bronchi and two lungs of a human being. So if you hold it up in profile, it looks like the bronchi and two lungs, and if I can find one low enough to jump up and grab, I'll do it, but none on this tree. Let's see if I can do it with an old one for you. No, <clears throat> it's all going to be leaves that are not joined by the track here. And then subsequently, I'll find you a small one. We can do it with that one. Let's walk up here. Let me see. There's some. There's some birds in activity here, but I, normally what happens in a drainage line like this is you have something flowering, which attracts a lot of nectar feeding birds, or you have um, a collection of different types of plants. So in this particular area, this just gives me the feeling that we're gonna be finding a mistletoe here. Mistletoes are flowering this time of the year and visited heavily by sunbirds. Um, but then again, the fact that we've got this uh, weeping boar bean here is also a brilliant draw card for or the sunbirds who feed uh, quite a lot on the nectar heavy plants. Shep, you'd like to know from me, are there any mushrooms out here or edible fungi? Yes, there are. I, I have in my book collection two books about edible fungi, uh, about fungus in this area, and there are about 10 or 20% of the fungus in the book are edible and to a massive degree um, um, highly prized out here. Um, that being said, there's a rule of thumb amongst field guides that if you don't have a plastic covering on top of the fungus that you're eating, leave it alone. And that's because uh, it's very difficult sometimes to distinguish between the poisonous fungus and the non-poisonous fungus. And fungus toxins to humans are deadly. You get it wrong, you can make yourself very sick. And there are lots of people in South Africa still today that every year die from fungus poisoning. Entire families are wiped out by someone buying a, a, a mushroom for dinner, serving it up thinking that it's one thing and it's not. So we try, or I at least try, I'm not good enough at identifying fungus yet to know what I can and what I can't eat. But on that note, uh, James is still with that lioness. Why don't you go see what she's doing? We are with the lioness. She is doing nothing but 